Many popular open source software like Jest or Next.js use something called monorepos. In the good old days, the compilation of those massive repositories was very slow. But now, with the help of tools like TurboRepo, it has become fast. And with fast, I mean blazing fast! I will give you a good introduction to TurboRepo and how to use it like the big companies. But first of all, let's clarify what the term monorepo even means and in comparison what the pros and cons of a polyrepo are. Monorepo means that you have one project which contains multiple sub-projects. Another way to look at it is to have multiple repositories in one repository. That means that theoretically we could have the backend API, the frontend and the mobile app in one single codebase. In comparison, the polyrepo approach uses multiple repositories for different projects. Pretty simple, right? I think the pros of the monorepo are pretty straightforward. First of all, collaboration in a team is much easier. That means that when you have a medium-sized team, everyone can always keep track of everything the others are doing and committing. Without that, you must jump around in different repositories and check for changes. Furthermore, dependency management will also become much easier because you can have a single source of truth for all your dependencies in a specific JavaScript project. Each different project in the monorepo can have different dependencies. However, you can keep track of all of them in your monorepo. Because collaboration is much easier, atomic changes or refactoring in general will also become much easier. Because you only modify one repository and don't need to jump between different repositories and create pull requests, everything is bundled in your monorepo. But monorepos are not every time very welcome. For instance, the git performance can really decrease a lot because your team members will make a lot of commits as well and all of those commits in the different projects need to be tracked by git. Therefore, the git performance will become slow as history deepens. In addition, the build times can be a bit longer as well. Luckily, there are projects like Toborepo or NX that decrease the initial build time by using the remote caching concept, but if you don't have it, the long build times will be visible. The pipelines in the whole DevOps process need to be optimized and reconfigured. Because it is really inefficient to build everything from scratch, there should be some process or tool to keep track of the changes that happened compared to the last build. Now that you know the pros and cons, you might actually question yourself when would you use a monorepo instead of a polyrepo. It depends on the problem you would like to solve. So ask yourself what is the current problem I want to solve. So for instance, I personally would not recommend having a backend and frontend in the same repository when your team is medium sized. However, if you decide to have for example a custom UI component library, maybe some other pages next to your main product, I would recommend having a monorepo because it saves you a lot of time in terms of developing the libraries and having shared configs. That was a pretty damn large introduction, so let's jump to what TurboRepo is and what TurboRepo makes so special. The TLDR is that TurboRepo is a high performance build system for JavaScript and TypeScript codebases. I think the most important parts of TurboRepo to know are incremental builds, content-aware hashing, parallel execution and remote caching. I think I will talk more about remote caching in a custom video, so we can scratch that for now. Incremental builds allow TurboRepo to remember what has been built, skip this stuff and only rebuild the new changes. It does that by using this content-aware hashing algorithm that compares the content and not the timestamps of the files when they were built. That means that Turbo generates a hash based on the content of your file. The other big thing is that parallel execution allows the developer to run multiple steps mostly at the same time. For instance, you can run a build command and run the test command. But this process does not use the power of multiple cores. That's why Turbo does not waste any CPU idle time and builds stuff in parallel if it can. Let's jump into some code and into the process of creating a monorepo with Turbo. Getting started with a new Turbo repo is pretty straightforward. First of all, we execute the following command. First, you select your favorite package manager you would want to use throughout the project. 
Now Turbo creates two different Next.js applications and three different packages. This entire project is now managed with Yarn Workspaces and Turbo itself. Just to let you know, Turbo works with all other front-end frameworks as well. So Next.js is not mandatory, but because Versal acquired Turbo, it generates Next.js applications for you. These two Next.js applications use a shared component library called UI that is in the packages directory. You can see the apps directory as a folder with all the standalone applications and the packages directory as a folder with all the shared libraries or configs. For instance, having a standard code style and linting process over all your front-end applications makes sense. You could easily set up a package with all the configuration files for years lint. Let's execute yarn build, which actually runs turbo run build. This command now builds both applications in our apps directory. The most beautiful thing about using Next.js is that the UI package will never build on its own because Next.js can use a plugin called Next Transpile Modules. This plugin allows you to only transpile or compile this package solely on the application where it is imported. Therefore, it is unnecessary to have an extra step of building the UI component library, which is super cool because no extra build step is required. The most beautiful thing is that, as I said earlier, TurboRepo hashes by content, allowing rebuilding super fast. Moreover, when I solely change the documentation application, it only rebuilds it because Turbo cached all the other applications. Another exciting configuration in TurboRepo is the turbo.json file. This file describes the pipeline how things are run in this monorepo. For instance, this build command defined as a pipeline depends on all other packages that should be built. So Turbo ensures that all the packages or dependencies of a specific application are built before this command gets run. There are a lot of more exciting features that Turbo has to offer like visualizing the dependency graph of the monorepo or profiling the entire dependency graph. But that should wrap up this video for now. Hopefully you have gotten a short overview of when to use a monorepo or a polyrepo and what Turbo is and what it offers. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.